Okay, so we want to create a cutoff blade for lathe operations and this is a solid model that comes from the Sandvik website. So when you go to the Sandvik website, if you have an account, you can download solid models. So this is the uh, QDNN2H60C25A and if you scroll down here down toward the bottom left, you'll see the links to download the step model. So if you wanted to follow along you'd be more than welcome to do so. So uh, there's two things that we want to do in the very beginning which is the orientation and positioning of a solid. For a cutoff blade when we uh, create a clamping unit for this to slide into the slot, uh, the zero reference location is going to be at that back corner. So if I go to a top view here the way that this comes in, uh, this zero point is at this theoretical corner, which is correct. However, um, you know, the x-axis is going to point toward the spindle and you know the z-axis is up into the clamping unit. So this assembly should be sitting in front of that that zero point should be on the back side. It should not be toward the spindle. It should be away from the spindle. So um, additionally, depending on if you're using this blade in a left or right-handed situation, uh, we need to make two G GDMLs. So if I just rotate this 180, it'll put it over here for a right-sided cutoff blade and it will also achieve uh, you know, moving that zero point to the back side. So what we're going to do is right click and say select all and then right click again and we're going to say copy and rotate, select rotate from the drop down, 180, use origin and there we go. So now uh, we have that located where we want. The insert is on the front side of the the zero point and it's oriented properly up into Z and the positive X is facing the spindle. So now what we want to do is generate uh, the location for where this uh, zero point is going to be for the insert down here. And we use the corner for that so what I'm going to do is zoom in and you can see the the two radii on each side what I could do is grab one of these and under home we can come to show hide and turn solids on and in the solids area we can right click and say create a bounding box and what that does is it will generate this 3D wireframe and you can see that uh, you've got that theoretical corner there like you would touch this off on the machine so we have that point now that we can use as a reference location and uh, additionally, you can you can basically grab this whole solid and right click in here and do the bounding box again. And if I pick this segment and look at the properties, I see it's you know 157 here. So you know we've got this four millimeter sized uh, insert that they've included that we can use uh, in the nomenclature. Uh, so if this was, I know some blade, you know you could put you know two or three different widths of, of insert in there. I've seen this maybe with a larger blade so you might want to make adjustments to this. So what you can do is from the center point here you can come up two millimeters or you know for a four millimeter if you came up let's say three millimeters that would be for a six millimeter. So you could do stuff like that uh, but what I'm going to do is just make this for the one four millimeter. So coming to manipulation we want to modify the work plane. So if that is not showing one of these others, you can click at the bottom here where this arrow is and you can just click on this top one, modify work plane. When you do that, th this will grow in size and what I could do is just select the Z axis and when I do that, it'll start to slide but no matter where I pick, it'll always stay along that Z axis. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this corner here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the V, which is the, the Y axis, and I'm going to do the same thing. You can do that, and you can do the X as well. So 
another thing that you can do is you could just grab this ball and move it wherever you want you know if you wanted to do that you can do that so I could just move it to there or just move it down back to where it was so it's uh, it's not that big of a deal um, you know how you move this you can experiment with that it is a new function inside of Esprit so it's a quick look at how to use that so now what we want to do is come here and create a new work plane we're gonna call this TA underscore one for tool adapter so when we create the uh, grooving insert it's gonna be placed at this position as its leading corner so now what I want to do is uh, save this out but I don't want to create a GDML with the insert solid included so I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that solid there and then what I'm going to do is uh, grab I'm just copying the file name here over on my other screen I'm gonna come to file save as and then I'm gonna pick holder file and then I'm gonna save this I'm gonna paste in the name this is the, the name that <clears throat> it comes in from the Sandvik website and then after the the uh, item designation there I'm gonna just underscore right because this is the right side and then four millimeter <clears throat> because that is the insert width that I created the TA for so I'm just gonna say save and that will save that uh, GDML for me and now what I want to do is uh, do the same thing for the other side and uh, this is pretty easy now that we have this one already kinda done uh, what we could do is right click and say select all so that everything is grabbed and then we're gonna right click again and say copy and this time I'm gonna pick symmetry we're gonna make sure that this is set to move and then the x-axis so when we do that it flips this guy around but you know we keep that zero point where it was but now all I gotta do is <clears throat> move my uh, my TA position that we defined for the right side to the correct position for the left side so we're gonna come back to the modify work plane I'm gonna pick this uh, the V vector again for for the Y offset and then I'm just gonna go ahead and digitize uh, where that corner is there and now that we've set that I'm just gonna come here and right click on that TA1 and just say replace and now that I've done that I'm just gonna click away now I'm gonna highlight that one solid again I'm gonna say file save as and this time we're gonna do the left side holder type uh, get rid of all this stuff here and then a left underscore four millimeter and that's it now if you don't have a uh, Y axis on your machine this is a this is a tricky part because sometimes these solids are not exactly uh, at you know let's say that this is an HF of uh, 25 millimeters or something so what I'm gonna do is uh, load this into what we call machine tool builder and these two solids are gonna come in and we're gonna be able to view what that offset distance looks like so there's our left so we can orient this however we want to save it you know in terms of the preview and there's our right and we're gonna do something similar for that one but then here this is what I'm looking at these values so you know when I when I look at these values here uh, when I click here you see that yeah it's it's all the way down to uh, point zero 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 eight so we just want to you know get that out of there so that it's exactly 25 millimeters and once I've done that in fact I don't even need this anymore uh, it automatically creates this for me uh, I don't need that because I'm not gonna put another holder adapter down here this is basically the insert and that's it and then I can come in and just resave the file and then I'm gonna uh, do the same thing with this other one the the left side so if I click on the TA you know we can see that it's there where it's supposed to be but yep it's it's still that point zero 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 eight I'm just gonna say uh, zero it out to 25 exactly 
and then uh, you know I'm gonna delete that because we don't need it and then come to file save and now we should be able to see these on the machine tool so let's go ahead and do that okay so here we have an Okuma machine and you know I'm just loading up the basic machine and I loaded up a, a cutoff holder here so looking at this this is uh this is gonna be a left handed and it's uh, APBL so I'm gonna right click on that I'm gonna say add an adaptive item and now uh, under Sandvik we'll go to the turning and cutoff blades folder where I save these and uh, where is it it was the uh, NN2H60 NN2H60 this one here these two so I'm gonna grab the left four millimeter one that we just created double click on that and you can see that that is placed onto the correct position there on the back side of this holder I don't know if I can yeah the turrets in the way so um, maybe I can get it from this side you can see that it does line up correctly there in the uh, in the holder so now what we want to do is just basically right click on this and say add a turning tool we're gonna say a grooving tool and depending on the tool that you last created so there you go so this one here uh, has the shank so I'm just gonna come to the shank tab and just hit zero tab zero tab and just zero all these out so they go to zero and then here uh, we want this to be a left-handed tool left and then uh, the width is going to be we'll just put in 158 to keep it simple and then uh, you might you might want to change you know a, a couple of these items here like this one maybe put it at half inch or something and then for the the thickness you know not sure how um, thick these actually can be but uh, that looks a little bit more appropriate so when you do that you can see that that four millimeter tool is going to be you know wider than the cutoff blade and uh, you know we can see this little little uh, 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 width there for this size well we'll just put this at the same value as that so it's not there and you know if you wanted to zero that out at 90 degrees as well so it's just a straight up and down insert you can do that but it should be no problem to use it inside of your esprit program now uh, the nice thing about having these separated is if you wanted to adjust the uh, value that this is sticking out you know if we put a positive one to make it shorter it's gonna bring it up into the holder a little bit more you know a negative point uh, three five or something is gonna make it stick out so we're measuring from the uh, the top of this holder here and Esprit shows you where that uh, reference zero location is at so there you have it um, that is how you would uh, create a cutoff blade holder inside of Esprit now the uh, the step where I loaded in machine tool builder to remove that point zero 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 eight or whatever if you have y-axis it's not really going to affect you that much but if you don't have y-axis on a certain machine uh, it is important to do that so hopefully this helps you make nicer simulations and accurate collision checking models inside of Esprit let us know if you have any questions or suggestions